Hello, my name is Jabari Osaze, also known as Heru Jedin Ma'at Aten Ra. I really want to welcome not only the folks at home who are watching, but also the folks that are here in our studio audience for hopefully what will be an interesting ride this evening. Um, we're going to be talking about ancient Egypt as the birthplace of medicine. And before I say anything else, let me say to you that it's even awkward for me to say ancient Egypt. I no longer use the term Egypt. When I talk about the, the incredible society and civilization that our ancestors created, I always call it Kemet. And so I put ancient Egypt there for those of us who may be at different places and preparing to enter into this journey. So having said that, let me dispense with the word Egypt and tell you that this lecture is truly going to be about ancient Kemet as a birthplace of medicine. I think that it's important for me to sort of give you an idea of what we're going to be covering this evening. My task is going to be a really interesting one tonight. As we talk about ancient medicine, I want to be able to give you a comprehensive overview, a comprehensive overview of ancient comedic higher order thinking and medicine. Giving you a comprehensive overview of something that took place over the course of three millennia is a challenge. But I truly want you to be able to walk away having the sense that you can truly begin to explain what we were able to do in the, in the field of medicine. Uh, feel like perhaps you have an understanding for where the ancient Camites fit within this whole framework of ancient sciences as opposed to perhaps other ancient groups. And so that's, that's in and of itself is a, is, a, is a challenge. I argue, and I will argue, that ancient Kemetic medicine was so advanced that it still serves as the framework for modern medicine. So we're not simply talking about something that happened and is no more. We're talking about something that is still the wellspring from which people draw from. But keep in mind that you're coming to a lecture being done by the Center for the Restoration of Ma'at. That generally means that we're not going to give you information simply so you can go home and feel good about what we did. I truly believe that tonight what we're going to do is we're going to present you with a call to arms. You cannot sit here and simply hear about what we did and then go home and do whatever you've done before. Hopefully by the end of this presentation, you're going to feel that there's something that you have to do. There's a charge that you've been given. There's a message that perhaps you've been given from our ancestors so that you can live life in a way that is pleasing to them. Now I know that you're listening to Jabari Osaz and he's going to talk to you about how ancient comedic medicine was perhaps the most important advancement in all of human civilization. But you don't have to listen to me. Herodotus, who is considered the world's first historian, I'd say that he's the, world's, he's the Western world's first historian, but um, he, regardless of his position there, we can agree that he is a very important early historian. Herodotus, this Greek visitor to Egypt, says, the art of healing is with them divided up so that each physician treats one ailment and no more. Egypt is full of physicians, some treating di diseases of the eyes, others the head, others the teeth, others the stomach, and others unspecified diseases. He begins to describe ancient comedic medicine as being so advanced that people have actually been able to develop a large degree of specialization. And so you weren't dealing with one person that tried to know it all. You could actually go see an ophthalmologist or a gynecologist. And we're talking about something that took place virtually 5,000 years ago. Now, I'll tell you something very interesting. And this is how ancient comedic philosophy ruminates throughout the contemporary world. This is an image of the eye that was given to Heru by Tehuti. And there's so many things you can say about this eye. We're not going to talk about them all here. And if you've been watching our show, you know that we've referenced the divine Ujat, is which, what this eye is actually called, the Ujat, many, many times. But really quickly, keep in mind that each of the portions of this eye can be separated into fractions. And when those fractions are put together, you get 63 out of 64. Because, of course, divine wisdom is knowing what you know and knowing what you don't know. 
And so I think that that is an important way for us to look at this eye. But in addition to that, as we talk about medicine, we have to deal with the fact that this eye is the archetype for the Rx symbol, which is the very symbol of prescriptions today. When you ask doctors, what does it mean? They say, well, it doesn't really have any meaning. And that's because they took two, La two I believe they were Latin um, numbers, that, letters at the time, and they attempted to, to connect this to this great eye of great wisdom, and that is how they came up with this Rx symbol. And you can see in this image the similarity in this symbol. Finally, you have to ask, what is the importance of understanding what our comedic ancestors did in the field of medicine? And I have to clearly say to you that, once again, we're the Center for the Restoration of Ma'at. And so we hope that this information will spur you to do more. Think about the excellence that our ancestors brought to human civilization. Think about all those things that we gave the world. And then think about those things that you're not doing because you think you can't. I know so many individuals that say, I'm not good at math. How can you not be good at math when you created it? I can't do science. Physics is, I have a problem with physics and chemistry. How can you have those problems when your parents gave it to the world? Hopefully, you'll begin to think about what we're actually able to do when we focus not on what's good enough or not on making sure that everything that people can see is nice, but everything they can't see can be whatever way you want to keep it. When we focus on excellence, folks, we'll be able to do wonderful things once again and hopefully be able to return to the throne. Keep in mind that I believe that our ancestors understood that there'd be a time that we would no longer speak tongues that they gave to us. That they understood that there would be a time that we would be visitors in our homeland. A time when we didn't remember our names. And so I truly believe that they wrote these great secrets in stone because they realized that as we matured, we would be able to read them and return to greatness.